and we're back and for this video we're going to talk about differentiability and differentials a function f is differentiable at a point p given by x sub 0 y sub 0 shockingly enough if the first partial derivatives of f exist at that point and for all points x y in some delta disk around the point now then p f of x y we can write as l of x y where l is that linear approximation plus e of x y where e of x y is the error term okay and and so the function is differentiable if as x y goes to our point p the error divided by the distance between um, our x y and our point p goes to zero. Now that's really pleasant to check, I understand. Um, not really. But there's some, a nice little fact about differentiability. And suppose e equals f of x, y is a function with domain capital D, and let x sub zero, y sub zero be a point in that domain. If f of x, y is differentiable at x sub zero, y sub zero, then f is continuous at x sub zero, y sub zero, so this is telling us that differentiable implies continuity. The theorem does not go the other way. Okay, so this is really important. There are functions that are continuous everywhere but are not differentiable everywhere. So. You should try to think of an example and you should maybe pause the video and think of an example before I give an example, but I have an example. Um, my example is z equals the square root of x squared plus 2y squared, which is the top of a cone, i.e. the top of a cone with vertex at the origin. Now, if you are a little bit discouraged because you think, you know, well, continuous, it should be differentiable, but you even know in, in Calc 1 that's not true, right? You can think of quickly a one-dimensional, um, I mean, a, a function in, in, in um, two dimensions, right? The absolute value of x, boom. Okay, but we do have the following. If f of x, y is a function with a domain capital D and x sub 0, y zero, sub 0 was a point in that domain, if f it's partial with respect to x and it's partial with respect to y all exist in a neighborhood of x sub zero, y sub zero, and they're all continuous at x sub zero, y sub zero, then f is differentiable. So continuity, but sort of stronger continuity, because we've required not just continuity of our functions, but continuity of the first partial derivatives. And that will give us that the function is differentiable. So I know it's not quite the same, but it's something. Okay, so um, I promised also that we would talk about differentials. So for a function of one variable, y equals f of x, we know the differential is dy, and that's given by dy equals f prime of x dx. So that's from calc one, and, but we can do something similar in here, in calc three. So let's suppose z equals f of x, y is a function of two variables with domain capital D. And let's suppose that x sub zero, y sub zero is a point in D. We will choose delta x and delta y so that the point x sub zero plus delta x, y sub zero plus delta y is in our domain. If f is differentiable at x sub zero, y sub zero, then the differentials x and y differentials dx and dy are defined as dx equals delta x and dy equals delta y. The differential dz, also called the total differential of z at that point x sub zero, y sub zero, that's defined by dz is the partial of f with respect to x times dx plus the partial of f with respect to y times dy where the partials are um, evaluate at our point x sub zero, y sub zero. 
So let's find the differential of the function and use it to approximate delta z at the point uh, negative one half, one half, um, where delta x is going to be 0.01, delta y is going to be 0.1. So the total differential is going to be given by dz equals right df dx of negative one half one half times delta uh, times not delta x times uh, dx plus df dy at negative one half one half dy but let's just do it a little more generally because well because i said so no um so what is a df dx So I'm going to write it without plugging in the point. All right, so df dx is going to be, we're going to have to use a product rule on this one. So we have the derivative of the first, which is 2x e to the x squared plus y squared times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, derivative of arctangent, that's just gonna give me two over one plus two x quantity squared, and that's times dx. So this is gonna take up a lot of space, plus um, the, the partial with respect to y, so that's just two y e to the x squared plus y squared, tangent inverse two x times dy. And recall that this is true because, well, because, what in the heck does that even say? Because we treat our uh, variable x like a constant. Now, let me just scoot this formula over a bit so that it's not all the way at the edge of the screen. Okay. There. Now that's a little bit uh, more legible, I think. All right. So at uh, negative one half, one half. Um, we have that uh, dz and delta z are approximately equal. So delta z is approximately equal to triangle z, uh, is approximately equal to dz. So delta z is the actual difference between z and dz. That's not exactly what I wanted to say. <laughs> Sorry, let me try that again. Delta z is the actual difference between z at the point negative one half, one half, and z at the point, negative one half plus 0 0.01, one half plus 0.1. That's what I meant to say. Um, so uh, triangle z is going to be approximately, we're going to evaluate now our derivatives at um, the point negative one half, one half, and then multiply by delta x and delta y. So that is going to give me a negative e to the one fourth arctangent of negative one plus two over one plus one e to the one fourth all times 0 0.01 plus two times one half e to the one fourth arctangent of one, I'm sorry, arctangent of negative one times 0.1. Okay, so that's going to give me a uh, pi over four e to the one fourth plus e to the one fourth times 0 0.01 plus a negative pi over four e to the one fourth times 0 0.1, which is going to be approximately calculator work, negative 0 0.1. So how does this compare 
how does this compare with the exact value of delta z? Okay, so like I said, the exact value of delta z is the difference between the function evaluations. Okay, so the exact value of delta z, I'm gonna evaluate my function at negative one half plus 0 0.01, one half plus 0 0.1, and then subtract the function evaluation at negative one half, one half. So that's going to be e to the negative 0 0.49 squared plus 0 0.6 squared times the inverse tangent of 2 times negative 0.49 um, minus e to the negative point, uh, 5 squared plus 0.5 squared inverse tangent of negative 1, which is e to the 0 0.6, 0, 0, 1 inverse tangent negative 0.98 minus e to the 0.25 times minus pi over 4. And the calculation calculator says this is approximately negative 0.12. So it's not too bad how good the approximation is going to be is going to depend on how smooth our curve is. All right, so we have some suggested exercises. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> differentiability of a function of three variables. Sorry. This is just a generalization of the differentiability of a function of two variables so that you can directly generalize the theorems. If a function is differentiable at the point x0, y0, z0, it's continuous. And if all the first partial derivatives exist and the function is con and the partials are continuous, f is differentiable. So everything generalizes. And I have some suggested exercises for you. Notice that I have a modification on problem 191 and a hint on problem 203. All right, so that's that for this. Next time we will be talking about directional derivatives.